And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for the return of the Heimer Abyss. As y'all know, this is one of my very favorite decks to play. And at the, the, like this is Rank Up Sunday, and so we're playing some decks that we've already played before um, for our Rank Up Day. Kind of playing three decks that right now would kind of be my three choices for a seasonal tournament. Aurelian Soul Leona, Nightfall Control, and now the Heimer Abyss. We've been talking about some different card choices in here. If you haven't seen the deck, um, we've we've definitely done well with it before. We've had two videos with a 4-1 and a 5-0, and we've won some games uh, as some bonus games besides that also. Um, the Howling Abyss is a card that is going to be really good in grindy matchups where they don't have the landmark removal, but overall not, not a necessity. But it's just a card that I really like. It's like, you know, it's a pet card kind of thing. Um, if you want to replace it, some people have asked like if they, they don't like it as much, they want to replace it, I would definitely recommend a third field of rush to begin with. I, I think you just kind of need some more top end if you take the Howling Abyss out. And so I would certainly recommend a third field of rush because field of rush is really good. And so I would play a third one of those. And then you can play kind of anything else that you want. You could play another Flash Freeze or another Tavern Keeper, or you could play something like if you want, you know, again, you want a top end card, you can play like a Progress Day. Um, instead of that other Howling Abyss. That's a good one to play in here. That's So, you know, that's what you could do. You could play a Field of Rush Progress Day. But I'm going to be playing the Howling Abyss because I like it. I think it's fun. Um, besides that, Tavern Keeper has been a card we've always been very happy with. So maybe finding room for a third would be something <clears throat> to do. Um, Sentry isn't... Sentry isn't amazing, but it just fits the curve really well with us having Trapper and Tavern Keeper on three and only the Sentry for two. Um, but that's something that we're going to kind of watch out for that maybe... Because like in, in the like mid and later part of the games, you'd rather have a Tavern Keeper than a Sentry. So that could be something to play three Tavern Keeper and only two Sentries. Or Static Shock. Static Shock's maybe one of the weaker cards in the deck. It does give us a little bit of card draw because that's something that we are uh, severely lacking as card draw. So Static Shock gives us a slight bit of card draw but usually the the one damage to two different things isn't necessarily the best um so those are like just uh some cards to kind of think about and watch for but um yeah let's give it a try it's going to be heimerdinger vi vi is such an underrated champion um being able to control the board and be champion removal take soak up a lot of re uh, removal spells from your opponent and uh, really lets your heimerdinger uh to you know, be able to be even better with having the Vi in here uh, be such a target. All right, but anyway, let's give it a try. The Heimer Abyss, fun one to play. All right, Draven as real. This is the kind of matchup where the Howling Abyss would be very good as long as they don't just kill it with a Scorched Earth. Um, Static Shocks do not kill their champions. Thermogenic Beam does kill their champion. This is a good Sentry matchup, because I can play Sentry on two, and then on turn three I'll still have four mana, so I'll still have like four mana for Thermogenic Beam or Aftershock on turn three to kill a champion. Nothing escapes my watch. For the homestead. So I, I like how we have like these two cards to be able to keep their champions in check. We do need to worry about Captain Farron and all the decimates that Captain Farron can make. I thought you'd never ask. So I'm going to use Aftershock and keep Thermogenic Beam that can also deal with the Captain Farron. Yeah, let's just get the attack for two in. Cool. Good trade for me. I have the best job. I think I want to go Trapper and then they attack and I flash freeze. Question mark? No, we'll just go. We'll just go with this. Was it me? Draven out. Because like the problem with this, like they have another Ezreal. 
Then I don't have removal yet for that Ezreal. Okay, now I kind of do with the shock and shot. Alright, we'll pass turn. Have them waste their mana. Sounds cool. Sounds cool. Joke debate. Man, they just want to waste their mana again. These old eyes still see far and clear. Get the five five. The yeah. Fires. That's what's These up. Stories were true. I'm through waiting. Okay, and we'll be able to save thermogenic beam. But I don't want my 5-5 five five to just have 4 damage on it. I think that's where the flash freeze. So we're a couple of turns away from casting Feel the Rush. We just just gotta make sure that we have three spell mana by the not by next turn, but by the turn after. Yep, and there's Farron. So I can't, like, I can throw my Johnny Beam this, but then I can't cast. If I do that, then I can't cast Feel the Rush the next turn. So, yeah, if, if I Aftershock, then I can cast Feel the Rush. And that'll be an 8 5, which could overwhelm 3 damage. Okay, so I'm gonna waste all this mana anyway. Actually, I'm gonna just actually cast a Static Shock. Let's just draw a card. All that mana is gonna go to waste anyway. It's worth it. Because then, if if I choose, we can use double Mystic Shot to kill the Farron if we so choose. So now with the Howling Abyss draw, I could go double Mystic Shot and still Howling Abyss. This game is not over. Okay, if I go, if I do that, I save one mana. So I do not get to feel the rush next turn if I do that. If I go Mystic Shot, Mystic Shot, Howling Abyss. Why are you sad? It wasn't me. It's un it's unlikely that this works because they're a scorched earth deck, but maybe it does. And if it does, that'll be really sweet. The safer play would have been to play Trapper and then just have Field of Rush the next turn. Ooh, looks like it's gonna work. But this is just more fun. <laughs> I just like the Howling of this more. Trindamir. You cost too much mana. I don't wanna spend I don't wanna spend my entire turn playing a Trindamir. Where are you at? Yeah, because Ezreal's leveled up. Hmm. Alright, fine, I guess it will. I know, right? Like, it's just... It's like the Trindamir is just a downgrade. Live to fight. Yeah, that was... One of the worst cards we could hit. <clears throat> Definitely looks like we would have been in a lot better spot if I would have just gone Trapper and then feel the rush. But, with that being said, they did have Static Shock Guillotine, which would have killed the two 10-10s. So, while that would have been better play in, in some respects, not all respects. 
first light illuminates the land. The sun's splendor reveals. So I'm worried about playing Trapper and then they kill Trapper and then get to attack for six. I'm worried about that. I'm just gonna save five life with the harsh winds. Cause I'm worried about my life total. Still have so many cards. It, so our deck is, is, of course, really built. To, like that's why I'm saying you kind of need the Howling Abyss because you got to have more top end in this deck. If, like if you don't play Howling Abyss, you got to replace it with other top end, like other Field of Rush and stuff like that. Because we've drawn zero of our two champions so far, and that's kind of a problem Trouble for our deck. So if so Maokai, if if we get Maokai Would Maokai obliterate their no it wouldn't it wouldn't obliterate their deck, would it? It only obliterates their deck when it levels up. Right? Or like if you play if you just play to level up Maokai, would they only have four cards in their deck? All right, so that is two guillotines down. I probably should just pass instead of even attacking. Like how they pass with all that mana, and I had the three mana. I probably should just not even attack and just pass turn. But not I think that's where I messed this turn up. I think I should have just passed because they had like the seven plus the three with the Draven and the Spider, and I'd have the Shivana. Yeah, I think I think I should have passed. Good lesson learned again. They've really used their two Noxian guillotines well of cycling away both of them after they've played them. Last light. They do have a spinning axe. Yeah, I I really messed this this. Yeah, like that's that was a big mistake by me. Um, attacking with the Shivana. Man, stop having these sentries. The sentries have been awesome, but I mean, I yeah, this is just lethal now. I, I messed this game up. That attack cost me this game. Good learning lesson. If they didn't have the spinning axe, I'd I'd be more confident in you know like a control chant, keep the Ezreal from hitting me, keep them from creating the mystic shot, but. Um, the spinning axe means this is lethal. Alright, good games. So yeah, we had... 
yeah, we had no, no Heimer, no Vi, and, and I made a very big mistake. Um, all right, let's mulligan those two expensive cards. Heimer is too good not to keep. Obviously, we don't want turn one Zoe. <laughs> I'm sorry. So never have the people in here that do the predictions, and I always forget about them. So great job by my opponent. I was hoping they would play something and, and kind of tap out and allow me to aftershock. They they did a great job, not playing anything. Passing and not playing anything last turn. Um, they didn't get another card though. They only just reduced the cost of their super cool star chart, so it's not that big of a deal for me. It just uh, gained them one mana. Because because I, I don't love using aftershock on Zoe whenever they're gonna you know be a, a Grand Plaza deck, right? It's, like Grand Plaza is a card that I I kind of want to say like you know I wish I had a different removal spell basically. have nothing to cast. Our deck looks like we have tons of units in our deck, doesn't it? We only have 14 total, including like the champions and everything. And so we had seven, seven of our 14 in our hand. Seven. Look out for Reavers. So let's put, they have 10 cards now in hand. So they're not going to be able to draw a card. So that's, that was like the good part about blocking is it keeps them from drawing a card. Still kind of saving Aftershock for the Grand Plaza. There's, there's finally, there's the Plaza. This is similar to last game where I can play the Howling Abyss, but if I do, then I don't have Feel the Rush. But as you can see, my board is already filled, so Feel the Rush isn't going to be as good.
All right, let's make some champions. Darius could be cool. My axe is ready. So that very fast pass, you can obviously tell is going to be judgment. I have two options. I'm obviously not going to attack with everything. It's either I attack with just like the one thing, or maybe waits. I just like pass and have them waste all this mana. So if I pass and they play a really in soul next turn, like what I what could be good against judgment on my side is finding like harsh winds and stuff like that. Noxus will rise. Almost in. Okay. I'll take that. Well, they have nine mana really? Oh, because the Raiden Stars? Oh, I should have passed. Yeah, I should have passed. Diminish without my attention. Hmm, should have passed. I would like to play the Field of Rush this turn, but it's just the one thing. That putting into play oh the six one elusive okay cool yeah we get the six one elusive wait vi why do you stay at 10 2 shouldn't you be like an 11 2 Yeah, we'll see if they go judge. You know, if they do go judgment out of the harsh winds to protect against that. Boop. If that was the card they had. All right, now we are playing some scouts. So predictions up. Whether you think we will win or lose. And yeah, that was a perfect Callista we got that Howling Abyss last game. Don't need the Howling Abyss against the Scout deck, though. It's going to be a little slow. Um, I like our setup with Trapper Vi. I would prefer to find an Aftershock for the Grand Plaza. I think that was important last game, how I saved that Aftershock. I didn't just kill a Zoe with the Aftershock and saved it for Grand Plaza. These trappers can get us some good blockers with the, um, you know, with the enraged yetis. I'm through waiting. The ocean whispers our secrets. Boo. Forward. Such a broken combination. Grand Plaza on their turn and then Island Navigator. Basically Grand Plaza with anything is broken. Ocean, 
All right, so they're up one card, but we're going to have the Enraged Yetis, and we have this really good at top end also. I guess I should just be casting Vi. Yeah, I should just be casting Vi, not not passing. I don't want to, like... Yeah, I, I wanted to see if like, they play something and then I Vi, but I shouldn't do that. I should just be casting Vi. Cool. I'm glad they played something and let me play my Vi. So do I challenge and trade for this plus Sharp Sight or no with the Harsh Winds? Probably no with the Harsh Winds. Bye. Bye, Pip. Demacia needs heroes. Stay on the target. Still heart, steady aim. Okay, no sharp sight. Let's see if they may have used a sharp sight there. But yeah, they just do that. Okay. We are just simply getting closer and closer for for Field of Rush. I guess I could go Enrage Yeti, Enrage Yeti, Heimer, try to attack and level up Vi. I could go this route. I've got your back. Cool. A hand. Yeah, they're just unloading on this turn. It's, you know, like, which one of these do we want to play? Um, or, like, do I want to play the Heimer after combat, where if I play the Heimer after combat, then we can feel the rush and we get the extra 8-8? Eight eight. I guess I probably need to do that, so I think I'd need to wait till after combat combat for this Heimer. That's like the, you know, that's like, you know, when are we playing this Heimer? Before or after? Do I let, do I let them kill it? And get a 2-1 for a blocker. So that doesn't matter. Alright, so whenever we feel the rush, we'll have a level up by. But now, Quinn attack. Um, you know, Quinn's gonna le be leveled up Quinn so that they're gonna put in a new Valor into play. And the Grand Plaza is just awesome. I wish I had an Aftershock in this game. No, this is, this is, unfortunately, this is just not an Abyss time. We are just too far behind for the Abyss. And this is not an Abyss matchup. Come, ahead. I, I can't take the time to play that. I gotta play Heimerdinger into Feel the Rush my next two turns and hope that that works. My steel is yours. Where Valor goes, victory follows. Valor, to me. Okay, that's not the worst of me. Order, entropy, a never-ending cycle. Not the worst. 
They're playing single combat? Yuck. Because that takes down, obviously that takes down the Heimerdinger, but it also takes down the 8-8 I would get from the Field of Rush. Please don't be the Heimer in hand. Please be one in the deck. Don't just take away my draw step. Take one from the deck. Just takes the one from the hand. So we just got no draw step there? Man, that went terrible. You're like, that was... It was looking good until single combat and then no draw step. Wow, that's rough. That combination. So no no 8-8, eight, eight, no draw step. A game. Go on then. That's rough. Wait a minute. The five one dies very easily to another misfortune, like you know, like if they have repost. Cool, no repost. Okay, so that's good. Yeah, it's surprising no block on the 10-10, right? They're willing to go down to two against the PNZ deck. That is surprising. Nothing gets between me and my mark. You can see the Nebastian border from here. No prey, no pay. Still heart, steady aim. Okay, they don't have it. There we go. Two and one, I was worried there. Okay, Ezreal Swain. See, a lot, a lot more Noxus decks these days. Um, man, if we have... <laughs> if we had Heimerdinger in our hand, that could be pretty awesome. I'll keep one Flash of Brilliance just in case, but we need to, you know, find some other cards. We can't just start with three Flash of Brilliance, even though... Like, if, if it was Heimer, I would keep Heimer and three Flash of Brilliance, probably. Probably do that. Where's our champions? We've that's something about like these games. We have not drawn our champions very well. That that last game, I guess, the scouts game, we drew champions. But the games, you know, but like the other three games, like where's our champions? <laughs> there we go. I had to say something, but not the champion I wanted. Still, do I play this? No, I wait a turn. Who's gonna close up? Ugh. Here comes the punchline. Certainly consider playing the thermogenic beam. Ooh, wow, what a draw. Good thing waited. Order, entropy, a never ending cycle. And waited on these flash of brilliance and everything. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No troll champ for protection, but you know, we get these three ones. I don't want to take too much damage from this kind of deck because you know, like those the Captain Farron decimates. Or I guess these this is a Leviathan Swain deck. Still they can do a lot of Nexus damage.
They better not have Scorched Earth, too. Bomb pass. Yay, no Scorched Earth. Yay. What's up, Braum? Braum's cool. Victory awaits. Vision to see what others can. Talk to me. <laughs> Check me out. Yeah, their hand was awesome. Don't blink or you'll miss me. Okay, let's see. How do we want to do it? I guess I have to pass. I think I have to Harsh Winds this turn. Because I think they're going to play a spell that's going to stun... That's going to do damage to me because of the Ezreal, which is going to stun my 3-3 three, three, and going to let this Swain attack through. I think that's a fair expectation of what's going to happen. So if I Thermo... I definitely would Thermo the Swain. And then they deal a bunch of damage. You know, like, if I do that, then they do a bunch of damage to me with this Ezreal. Yeah, maybe that's still the thing to do. You take a bunch of damage, though. But that does allow me to keep Trapper to block. Or... Man, if they have, I guess if they have two spells, I don't get to block at all. Okay, good. I'll still definitely block here. A lot of damage they get to deal, though. Charge. So I do get have the ability to play Braum and Vibe this next turn. Heck, Braum and Thresh. We'll start with Braum, then we can play one of these other two. Destination in sight. All right, so a five-eight. So probably Vi. Yeah. Because if, like, Thresh, like, they just block whatever I bring to challenge with the Leviathan. How do I kill my own thing? <laughs> I need to play Lucian and then also have one of my things die. There's a chill in the air. Yeah, we heal I heal for one less, but the Thresh is like a card that I'm actually gonna want to play in Rage Yeti, not so much. Oh my gosh. Yeah, what a hand. One shot, all skill. Yeah, good game. No, I'm not gonna play Thresh right now, it just gets stunned. Firing. I can't play Thresh right now. But the game's over anyway. Gosh, we just keep on... We we just didn't draw any removal this game. We just drew all of our harsh winds and units. No removal. We had a, like, a very, very small amount of removal. But, yeah, this one's obviously over. They play any spell. I guess I have to play the Enrage Yeti first to protect against spell, but, I mean, we're not... Yeah, like, that just kills us. That's just lethal. Yeah, ridiculous hand. It wasn't enough. All right, twisted uh, gameplay. Just gonna mulligan the static shock. We'll keep the rest. 
I hope I don't have to play the Tavern Keeper early. <laughs> it's it's crazy how much Howling Abyss we've been drawing. See the Nebastian border. Ooh, really like that card. In Avarosa's name. Is a real spin to win. Maybe I need to thermo that. I don't know. A winner is you. Butcha. I guess I still have that decision whether or not to thermo that. I mean, we can't really blame Heimer, or sorry, we can't really blame the Abyss for the two losses. The first loss was the first loss was just on me, right? It wasn't the Heimer Abyss's fault that I attacked with the Shivana and gave my opponent the ability to spend a lot of mana and get really far ahead, and then, um, you know, and, and uh, yeah, you know, get far ahead and, and kill me. I, I I could have just passed the turn and made them waste all their mana when they gave me that opportunity. It wasn't the Abyss's fault that um, you know that I played those cards. Safeguard our homes. Last game, my opponent, and then, you know, like, last game, my opponent just had an awesome hand. Like, they they really had um, everything that you could want. They had good interaction and, and just had, like, all, you know, like, their champions and Leviathan and all that stuff. Like, Leviathan plus Wayne plus Ezreal is a great combination, and I just could not stop it. It wasn't, again, it, it wasn't really the, the Abyss's fault that I couldn't stop that, that I just had all Frostbite cards in hand and couldn't stop Swain Leviathan. You know, I wouldn't play something that would stop Swain Leviathan over that besides, you know, just play like Feel the Rush, but Feel the Rush wouldn't have matched up well against Swain Leviathan anyway. It would just stun my 10 10s. So I don't. I don't. I don't think that we. I don't think either loss can be pointed towards the, how, the uh, Howling Abyss. I don't think that's very fair to the card. Okay, well, so now I don't have an answer to Gangplank. We'll see how that pairs, you know, how that works out for us. But, um, you know, I was going to have good attacks here. Even without the 2-1, I still have good attacks. Because you, you never know with that, especially, like, they're just drawing more cards with the spray fin and everything. That slot bot could get a lot of health. You never know with that card. And, you know, it could start, tur start turning into, like, you know, a 3-7 and stuff like that and be really difficult to deal with. I've had a couple of these losses today been me not passing turn when I should have. But it's always it's always about learning. And um, you know, learn from those situations and scenarios and I'll pass the next time that they come up. Let's play. Patience. I don't change faith, but I can see it. I'm going to save the spell mana. Um, Enrage Yeti being a 5-2 or a 5-5, five five, either way, it's, it's fine. I don't need to use... Like, I, I'd rather have the Tavern Keeper be able to heal my Nexus, right? Because, like, they can... Um, you know, they can have the Nexus damage and everything. I would prefer that. I like our late game with this kind of stuff, so... I don't need to try to save this. So right now I have, like, mana for a Flash Freeze... Hold it, partner. As well as Howling Abyss or Heimerdinger. I'm going to go with Heimer plus Aftershock to kill Twisted Fate. I can kill Twisted Fate next turn. I want to get this Abyss in play. I don't think they're going to have an answer for it. Let's get this Abyss in play. Come on, give it a try. Or do they have Crumble? That's not a crumble. Spin, 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 you win. Okay, four out of eight. And they have three fleeting cards. 
So I can pass to them, see what they want to do with the fleeting cards. Okay, the answer is they do want to cast them. They didn't want to just go to the next turn. This could open up another Twisted Fate red card. I'm out. I rarely forget. I mm. never forgive. That's why we respect you, Captain. That can't be. All right, we can unload a Heimerdinger and untap with it. That's always a plus. Callista, that's a good one. Callista helped win us that game. You know, win us our, our other game that we won. Okay, so we can block here, block here. That thing's a 5-6. Shoot one of these and flash freeze this thing. Still got five mana. Enough to play Callista and feel the rush next turn. They walked around, cowards. It's smaller than a diagram. Gotta go with the flow. Yes, yes, again. I'm not greedy. My friends, though. We, we shall not rest until all so I think Enraged Yeti's been the largest thing that's died. What did we get? Yeah, we can have Karma Field the Rush set up. That's a pretty sweet setup. Karma Field the Rush. I know they can have like their 3-3, three, three, like they have good blocks with some of the stuff, but I need to clear up space, also. Arithmetics! Getting that Twitch Prime sub for the fifth month. Thank you, Arithmetics. Hmm. All right, go hard does too. So I think like you know, I want them to like you know, they kill my Heimerdinger, I play Feel the Rush. Um, very possible that I'm just passing and not spending uh, any mana here. All right, so maybe not. Whatever the cost. I rarely forget and never forgive. Captain on deck! So harsh winds right now gets me two of the six one turrets. Yep, hey, I talk to spirits. It's a viral. Ooh, wow. We get Karma, Lux, Harsh Winds. Oh, man. Karma, Lux, Harsh, win harsh Winds. That sounds intriguing. Come on. Give me priority. Give me priority. Let me play Lux before Harsh Winds. Yes. Win. Karma, Lux with Harsh Winds. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, because the, you know, we, we double up these final sparks, and they have the overwhelm. Oh, come on. Why is my time going down? I can't do anything right now. 
Don't waste my time. Okay, good. <laughs> I was like, D let me let me play my cards. And yeah, the, the two final sparks do 16 total because they double up, so eight eight each, 16 total overwhelm, and we kill them with that. See, the Howling Abyss is awesome. You get to do some some just really cool stuff, right? Like, how many times do you get to Karma, Lux, Harsh Winds, right? Like, do you ever play Karma and Lux and Harsh Winds together? That's not easy to do. Those are three different regions, but they work really well together, and so that's what that's what we have. You ever have you know, you know, attack with Callista and put a 6-1 elusive turret into play. You know, like, <laughs> sometimes you do that. That's also pretty good. Um, so, yeah, I don't I don't think the Howling Abyss was was why we lost our, our two games. I think that the, the first one was on me um, with not being patient enough with the Shivana attack. If I pass the turn there, I think we can uh, set up a much better uh, defensive front than what I had. I think that attack cost me. And uh, the game three, or like the game four, the other game we lost, just, you know, Leviathan Swain is really good. And they had they had very good removal um, and the Ezreals and everything. Like, they, they had a good hand, and it matched up well against us, and I don't think the Howling Abyss cost us that one. Uh, let's see. All right, so that's, so that's the, the Heimer Abyss. Um, still awesome, really awesome deck. This is our, our worst record with the deck, the three and two. Um, but like I, I talked about, I, I think there are some, some reasons behind our two losses. One of them I definitely could have fixed. Um, really cool deck. So those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there. And uh, leave those comments. Those of y'all that have been playing the deck, uh, let me know how it's been going for you. Uh, so people in chat here have been, been talking about it, how they've been enjoying it. Ho hopefully you try it out and uh, like it too. You know, just a, a different deck that the people aren't playing at all. And you have something like Vi that's really underrated. Um, even Heimerdinger um, is not as underrated, but it's, it's still a very good card right now. And, um, you know, give this one a try. All right, but that's all I got here for the Heimer Abyss. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.